Howdy doody, buckaroonies. Now, I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, but your mom is so fat that her memory foam forgot. Your mom is so fat that Thanos had to snap twice. Your mom is so ugly she walked into a haunted house and left with a job application. Your mom is also so dumb that she stared at a carton of orange juice for 12 hours because it said concentrate. Your mom is so nasty that they used to be called jumpalines until she jumped on one. These are all examples of shade, but regardless of your mom's intelligence, this is not the type of shade we're here to throw down today. Instead, we're going to be exploring five different ways to use shade from UVI, a creative EQ tool with a ton of awesome features. Shade is available right now, and if you want to check it out for yourself, you can find more information with the link down in the description. Shade packs in a lot of different features, so the first thing is the filters. There's 35 different types to choose from, so we've got low pass, high pass, you know, all the basics. We've also got some more exotic ones, like some phasers with a lot of different modes. There's also comb filters and flangers, which can get really weird. There's also things like, in the special category, the expander filter, which is the filter from Falcon, which has another 36 gajillion modes to play around with and get really, really weird with. One of the biggest selling points of Shade, though, is the modulator section down in the bottom, which has nine different modulators. There's a lot of weird things we can do with these. So we've got standard stuff like an envelope, there's also figure, which is a really interesting morphable thing that's a lot of fun to experiment with. We can start shaping this around a little bit and start rotating it. And we can link these things together in lots of different ways. So let's grab an LFO here and just click and drag and start adding more vertices and rotating this whole thing and stuff like that. We've also got macros, msegs, random, spread, and XY. Shade also offers dynamic modes, so if we have a sound and let's say we've got a really annoying peak here, you can simply right click and make that band dynamic. We'll just put it right there and start adjusting the threshold. And there we go, we've just made a dynamic EQ. Shade also offers a sidechain input mode, so we can go up to the trigger, change the source over to sidechain, and then maybe add something like an envelope. So now as we trigger something through the sidechain here, we'll adjust the sensitivity a bit. We can drag this on and add that to the gain of this band, which is a lot of fun to play around with. And you can use this with any of the filter types to get a lot of weird, dynamic, interesting movements. Shade also has a really nice clean interface, which I really like because everything is kind of kept on one panel for the most part. There's not a lot of diving or hiding behind different menus. So even though I'm looking at one of these EQ bands here, I'm still seeing all my modulators. I can see what is modulating what and I can switch between these two different EQ band things to see what is happening with each of them without having to dive through a bunch of sub pages and tabs and kind of forget what it is I'm looking at. Shade also has a nice and easy workflow. If we go down here and add a macro or something and we wanna target the cutoff frequency of this orange band right here, it's super simple, just drag, drop, set the modulation range, toggle if it's bipolar or not, wiggle it around and then move on with life. And that's just some of what Shade offers. There's a whole lot more and you can find more information on UVI's website. So let's talk about five ways to use this thing. With the gain module, you can use Shade to actually create your side chaining in your track. This is super simple. So I've added a single band here. We'll just go down to special and find the gain module. Then we'll go to our trigger here, change the source to our side chain. We'll enable side chaining. This will be different based on your DAW. So I've got just a little loop here with like a piano sound and a kick drum. And you can see that kick drum is that yellow signal, so we'll use that and we'll add an envelope. We'll trigger that, we've got it triggering every time. We'll set the envelope to target the gain here. We'll take that to turn it down and now we should get side chaining. Which is really nice because it's so clean and it's just a super fast way to get this done. So I really like that, especially if you're doing things like only ducking out the low end or maybe only a little bit of the high end or however you want to do it. So that's a really useful way to use this. Shade has also got some crazy steep filter slopes. If we go up to the top here and let's make this a low pass filter and we'll go to resonant, you can see the slope goes anywhere from six dB per octave, which is really, really gentle, all the way up to 2000 decibels per octave, which is effectively just a hard brick wall. So with something like 72 decibels per octave, this is really useful for creating filter sweeps. So what I like to do is go in and just add a macro and I'll tie that to my frequency here. 
And we'll just make this go all the way down. So we'll leave it all the way up. And as I turn this down, now it's going to sweep things down. Once you've set this up within your DAW, you can then just create a quick automation clip targeting that macro to create a filter sweep down or up or whatever you wanna do. So let's take a listen to what that sounds like. Which is really useful for a lot of modern genres. That's something that I think every producer has done at one point or another, and this is just a really effective way to do that, but also do some weirder things with it using some really, really steep filters or creating a really resonant sweep or whatever you want to do. With all these different features and macros and things like that, Shade is great for modulating sounds and actually comes with a really good library of presets you can use as a starting point. With the amount of modulators available, as well as the ability to link these modulators together, so like taking the spread and tying it to the depth or something, we can create some very complex chains of filters and sweeps and things happening to a sound that can transform something into something either entirely different or just something a bit more spicy. Let's flick through a couple of these presets. So without shade, I've got just kind of the standard Rhodes piano sound. Now let's bring in shade and start trying this out. Like I mentioned earlier, one of the things with Shade is that you can make any EQ band dynamic by just right clicking and selecting Make Dynamic. So let's find a point like that, I guess, and drop the threshold. We can adjust the range, the depth, the attack and release, the stereo. But what's really cool is we can also do this for things like only the left channel which is not gonna be super apparent here, but I think you get the idea. This is really fun, especially for doing things like mid and side. So we could use something that maybe uses a dynamic band of a shelf, but it's only on the sides of the signal, which can get really kooky. And then maybe we'll do something really, really extreme here. So we'll make this dynamic, but we'll make this one only the mid-channel, I guess, and make it go the opposite way. So we'll drop the threshold and make it go up. Which is really fun to experiment with. One of my favorite things about Shade is the ability to kind of roll your own custom crazy filter. So I've got a comb filter here, which also has a phaser that's only affecting the mids and a high pass on the sides. But as I increase the high pass, I've got a low pass here that will also wiggle around more and more the higher the high pass gets. And this is all happening with just one knob and a couple modulators. which is really wild and lets you get really weird with sounds when you get into some of the steeper filter and more resonant types. And there you have it, five different ways you can use shade to get creative and weird, but what kind of video would this be if I didn't show you one cool bonus tip? Here, I've got something that's maybe a bit more fun. I've turned shade into a resonator. So within a synth, I've just got a little tiny blip of noise. And that's it. I fed this into a shade, which I've tuned into a resonator bank. So I've got this tuned to A, and if I play that noise through this, because these filters are so steep and resonant, you hear we get kind of a plonky acoustic sound that sounds like it's in a, I don't know, maybe in a tube or something, but I duplicated that, so it's another instance of shade with the same settings. And we get a pretty convincing sound. Now we can bounce that out by recording it. So we just got this one little tone here. And because we tune this to A, we could bring this into a sampler and play it back chromatically. Now I've run this through a sampler and added a couple little basic effects as well as one more instance of shade here with a preset. And let's see what this sounds like.
Ready?